uh, Andreas. But you're probably gone by that time. It starts. It's gonna be August 24th. That that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. that's the day I leave. The same that, day. That, well, that's the day I not leave here, but that's the day I start the trek back. Okay. Yeah. So what are you flying out? Driving out. Uh, driving out, biking back. And what are you gonna do with your car when you get? Someone's getting the car and then taking the car back. So it'll be nice because then it won't be a long overlap. But you know, for a day or so, they'll kind of be able to see me when they fly out and yeah. that'll be like a week or so into the trip so mm-hmm. i'll just be kind of so you gonna be by yourself yeah it's unsupported oh wow yeah it's gonna be lonely yeah everything in the bike but you know well you have a lot of time to listen to podcasts i do i do <laughs> and I, my my the 3d that that bluetooth speaker i was talking about that thing fits right in one of the water uh c- carriers so nice yeah yeah <laughs> i had a test run i i biked um i biked with that on my dad's into biking too. That's his like big thing. He just did, I guess, last month. There's everyone's doing this like you bike so many miles, and people make donations, and then you put the donations. I don't know if it was an app or something. He was he was talking about it. I'm he, not, I'm actually not even that into biking. Really? Yeah. No. This is all this is all new to me. We'll get into we'll get into that. Though. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey everyone. This is Anthony with Interviews with Everyday People. Uh, sitting here with uh, I'll let you introduce. I always let the guests introduce themselves and then go that route. Cool. Um, but uh, yeah, go ahead. Cool. I'm uh, John Metalavich. I uh, I own Ruthless Performance, and I'm doing the uh, cross country bike trip uh, for Back and Black Dog Rescue and for Hillside SPCA later this summer. Nice. So yeah. what is what is Ruthless? Ruthless Performance. Yes, performance. Uh, I don't. I always say Ruthless Aggression because I am a wrestling fan, and I think that's a John Cena reference. I think he was called the Ruthless Aggression. <laughs> oh, that's pretty something. cool. Something. Yeah. It, I always. My brain always goes to either nerdy stuff or wrestling. Well, so. mine goes. Mine's starting since of this whole bike trip and doing all these things for dogs. Mine's starting to go to dog places. I was actually thinking of making a a, a dog collar that says Woofless Performance. So, <laughs> so that's where my mind's been going with it. But uh, it's just a performance uh, a performance enhancement company. We work with a lot of athletes. Um, a lot of just high-performing individuals trying to take them to the next level. And most of the time, it's pretty traditional uh, strength and conditioning type work, mm-hmm. speed and agility, things like that. Things Do you have, just, like, a gym or a place you, like, work out? It's all subcontracting. So uh, Ruthless Performance, we have uh, affiliate locations kind of throughout East Central PA. So we're in Bloomsburg um, and Oryxburg are two of the closest locations to So here. is it kind of like a personal trainer? Like, you, you get someone from your place to come and help you get in better shape or something? Uh, yeah, for the... M- we personal training uh, makes up a, a small segment of what we do, but for the most part, personal training is a little bit more uh, general population oriented. So uh, what we look for is people that are kind of already athletic and kind of just looking t- to the next level. But you basically to the untrained eye, it would kind of look like it's mm-hmm. almost identical. Okay, I actually when I was I, I coached for a while, mm-hmm. and then I was getting out of coaching, and uh, I found this app, and I it probably wouldn't work in our area, but. It's an app where they actually they like so they say you're subcontracted kind of, and someone says, "Hey, you can hire me to be like a personal soccer coach, and I can help you elevate your game." Yeah. But, but you have to go and show them that like your credentials and stuff you've done and mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that. But it was like a like an app you went through. Oh, cool. So it's, it's, it kind of sounds a little similar. Yeah, I, but... I work with um, like you said, soccer players there, but we work with a lot of swimmers, so that that could okay. be something that that is kind of comparable to what we do. Awesome. Yeah, they make up the. I don't want to say the majority, but the bulk of probably the highest volume. Well, second highest volume of athletes by group would be swimmers. They're our highest qualitative group. Oh, that's wrong one. My bad. All right, sorry, I just turned you up a little bit. Oh, no worries. <laughs> cool. You know, there's a little soft focus, but we got you. Oh, cool. You're good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I forgot. Oh, yeah. So, um, I I suck at swimming. I yeah. I don't know. I'm not. I, I mean, I won't die if mm-hmm. I go in water, but like. Like I don't know any of the strokes, and I just if I, I'm, like, I'm just not gonna go like deep waters for too long. That's yeah, not for me. Well, and that's interesting too, is because people people uh, associate me with the sport. They think like you know maybe I could help their uh, kid learn how to swim or something. Like that. And I that's like the that's the part I don't know. Like yeah, yeah I can like I could take you from like from here to here, but not from like the bottom to like, yeah. Like I. I I don't know. You just start swimming. <laughs> like, it's, I'll tell you it's what. It's a like, different skill. Yeah, yeah, coaching, coaching. I coached youth, and then mm-hmm. I coached um, like high school kids, and then I like so I had every range, and it's crazy when you when you're mm-hmm. when you're coaching, you're like, man, I want to make this kid a good soccer player, but they don't know how to run. Yeah. Like, do you ever like do you ever see see on someone so uncoordinated they don't like they run weird. Yeah, you're talking. Well, that's why I, a lot of the times, it, it's interesting with swimmers that like the the less competitive level is the reason they are swimmers is because anything they try to do on land they're just too uncoordinated mm-hmm. and just end up falling over so we see a lot of that with swimmers I, I it's it's a weird thing to, and this is not a dig or a shot but like 
I knew a lot of kids that were growing up. They were kind of on the chubbier husky side. Mm. They could not run a forty. They would they would you would kick their ass in a forty. Mm. And but if they were in the pool, they were like fish. Like the, he like my little brother was one. Like he was always chubby, overweight. He couldn't run to save his life. But if you put him in a pool, he was quick. Yeah, like he was fast in the pool. It's an interesting thing, and I've been thinking about that a bit lately because even not necessarily at the Division One level in college, mm-hmm. but like up through like the NCAA like D two level, you can have some pretty husky dudes, and mm-hmm. they're doing pretty well. Yeah. They're like they're just quick. Yeah, it's just, it just doesn't, it's weird that it doesn't translate. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I never, I don't know. I always get into like different sports. Like every now and then, I'd be like, I'm gonna find something and just kind of study it for a while because mm-hmm. it's something I'm not into. So the thing I'm trying to learn now is uh, roller derby. Neat. But there's like two different versions of it. Like we have a. I don't, do you not realize that we have a like a semi pro team in our area now? No, but now I want to be on the team. Yeah, well, it's girls only, I believe. Oh, well, I could I could pull that off. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> um, but they're called the Scream Queens, and they actually do meets out of uh, stri- um, Roller Roost. No way. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, one of the girls in the team is actually going to be on the show. That's pretty cool. Um, but it's, like, weird. Like, I used, I used to watch the it, the bank, remember? Like, yeah, that's, to, yeah, that's what I was well, thinking. This one's about. flat track, and... It's kind of like the same thing, but the scoring is different. I don't know how it's scored, but pretty much the person you have your runners that have to get through the blockers, yeah. and then if you get around, then you have to like pass, and whoever gets back around first, all these crazy rules. It looks like a it looks like a blast, um, but it's it's definitely it's a learning curve. I'm still trying to learn the rules. I and think stuff. I would love like some kind of roller skating if if I but it would take. Like probably three solid hours of no one else being on the ice mm-hmm. because I wouldn't want anyone seeing how dumb I'd look for the first fifteen yeah. minutes of it. I because can it would skate not be good. so good forward. I never learn how to skate backwards. Yeah, and people do the limbo on it. Yeah, yeah I don't know how they're doing that. <laughs> I, I, I lived at Roller Roost like well, every uh, Friday night growing yeah. up. That was my high school. I, I I still I talk about that place regularly, but just like in like a reminiscent sense, like you, know, you just get the free passes. Yeah, the free pa- you know, that was like, that was my place. Like that's where I picked up all the girls from different schools because I was a Monty City kid, and I'm like, yo, we can go get some positive girls at Roller Roost, <laughs> and they never know who we are. Like going yeah. into the big city. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's pretty much yeah, Monty City compared to Pots. Yeah. We used to always call Pots for like. Beverly Hills. Yeah. <laughs> like we consider like we were like the slums on the north side and then this side of the mountain was all like nice stuff. Well that but, uh, I, I went uh I used to go to Minersville and then I transferred to Pottsville during high school. Okay. And it was. I mean, act, like it actually is a bit of a transition. Like mm-hmm. it's you know, you know, there's in a lot of these smaller schools it's like there's so few people that it's like basically one group of kids, but in Pottsville it's like there's actual like it looks more like a high school does on like a movie or something. Yeah, it's like, like there's real. kids that you graduate with that you don't even know their name. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can pretty much, if I really put my mind to it, I could probably name you every single kid who was in my graduating class. Yeah, because we're not that big at all. Yeah. Um, and then I and then I was invited to two Blue Mountain winter formals or proms or dances, and that was like going to like a private school. Yeah, to North- <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. And then they all thought like they thought they were kind of like bad kids too. Like, oh yeah, we're bad. I'm like. Yeah, yeah I, we we got over that in like third grade. We were doing that. What you're doing, like, <laughs> there's kids in my school that are like doing hardcore drugs already. You guys yeah. are gonna step your game up. Yeah, the country club badasses. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what it was. We're yeah. like, we're gonna have a beer tonight. I was like, a beer? Like, it's like six kids splitting a locker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, take a sip, man. Yeah, yeah. in Monte City, they're like they're stealing kegs out of the place and like there used to be a beer place on this like in the like right on railroad like the last street in town uh, maple street and they would buy beer or have someone buy it and they would literally just walk it right up in the woods wow yeah, it was, and then the cops would come up and chase you and then you'd run away and then the cops would get they'd leave and then you go right back to what you were doing <laughs> Man, it was it was out of control school county is great for that yeah it's, i i honestly i think it's it's cool because of that and that you have the ability to kind of um it's a little bit more formative. Mm-hmm. You have a little bit more wiggle room to kind of figure out your own path. That's here. that's kind of what I'm trying to do with Skookstock. I yeah. want it to I want it to be like a giant, like a kind of like a bush party. Like yeah. we could like there's a fire pit that we could put a big fire pit and have bands and and I, the only thing I'm scared with the fire pit is I want people to get drunk and jump into a fire. Like I just don't want someone to get hurt. Yeah, that'll be that'll be fine. Yeah, but it's, I'm trying to just replicate like a giant bush party, but have like eight awesome bands. So, Good. Yeah, I'm really pumped yeah. for it. I, I was excited to see that. I did see that on the on the Instagram page. Yeah. And but you know, just unfortunate. I'm leaving that day. Mm-hmm. Well, from California. Yeah. But, where where in California are you starting? Uh, San Francisco, right on the Golden Gate Bridge. Now, how did you find the trail you're taking? Um, so it's just a, a little bit of uh, internet research. So there's um, this called the Adventure Cycling Network. So um, 
long distance cycling is a bit of um, it's a, it's a pretty big uh, pretty big group of people that are interested in it. So there's a pretty elaborate uh, map network across the country that kind of uh, takes it into detail. Um, I think I sent you um, one of the images that has mm -hmm. like the, the full map. So yeah, the, someone said that there's a trail that goes from coast to coast. Yep, uh, that's the Trans America, um, and I will be joining that in Colorado. So the first uh, tr the first um, trail I'm on is the. Uh, Western Express, which goes from uh, San Francisco to uh, Pueblo, Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, and the only reason I'm doing that is it's just a few hundred miles shorter than taking the uh, actual Transamerica all the way from up in uh, you know, the Pacific Northwest. So it cuts a few uh, hundred miles off that way and just gets me from one side to the other. Um, but then that's when I meet up with that Transamerica. Yeah, I'm looking at it here. That's crazy. Is there like... Do you, do you have spots that you're gonna like? Are you gonna do so much a day? Like, what's your what's your plan? So it's about um, so even just to take a step back, basically, you know, I'm doing this whole thing. It's just a big charity ride, just to kind of raise uh, awareness and money for that hillside and for that back in black. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of get that. But um, so yeah, we're looking at about 90 miles a day average, somewhere right around there. So it's uh, 3,900 miles total um, over the course of 43 days. So I think that basically what the math works out to with a few rest days built in. Um, and then there's a few checkpoints we're hitting along the way. But fortunately, that, um, that Adventure Cycling Network I was talking about, they were nice enough. They donated the maps completely uh, for the event. So basically from, um, from San Francisco, from the Golden Gate Bridge to Front Royal, Virginia, all basically have turn-by-turn -turn directions on these maps, that, physical maps um, that have uh, all kinds of stuff on it that's really pertinent to cyclists, like topography. Uh, what I'll be covering, you know, even where convenience stores are, um, cycling, cycle-friendly campgrounds, things like that. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's pretty well detailed. Um, I don't want to say it takes anything away from it, but you know, just because. It's oh, you definitely don't want to be lost. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, not now. Are you not? You're not. Are you riding only during the daytime? Yes. Yeah. Because that nighttime stuff freaks me out. Yeah. Yeah. As it's riding through the day freaks me out. Like you always hear those horror stories where like someone got hit in a car. But a lot of that happens like people that but do that like Europe or yeah. like South South America, I, where I, the roads aren't really built for it. Yeah, and I think that's what it is. It's a big infrastructure thing. Like you see, um, these routes are. It's almost somewhat comparable to like the Appalachian Trail or something. So mm -hmm. there are people that do this a good bit. So if you're on these roads, you're going to be at least um, you're going to be a little bit more cognizant of the fact that there are bikes on the road as well. Mm -hmm. um, and realistically, you know, just kind of just preliminarily looking over the maps, it, we don't really see a lot of traffic from Sacramento until we're pretty far east because you know the you know there are cities kind of all over the place, but the way the route is set up. It, kind of it's such that it's taking you away from those kind of roads yeah so it, it it's nuts to like listen to my dad talk about biking like he's like oh i want to go to colorado and do this one trail that everyone talks about and i want to go to michigan and do this one trail everyone talks about and he goes you literally you start here and then you end here and it's literally like they built the bed and breakfast on the bike route for the bikers yeah. and like a lot of like breweries will build their breweries around bike trails too yeah. where you could like stop at a brewery get a bite to eat and they're like bike friendly like, yeah it's remarkable it's mm -hmm. remarkable how far especially like you're talking about in colorado the the infrastructure they have for, for cyclists out there it's a little bit more progressive than here and you know it's interesting people kind of worry about my safety on this but if you just look at like the numbers mm -hmm. you know pennsylvania isn't necessarily one of the most bike friendly states so you know were i to do the same amount of miles around here i'd be more likely to end up in some kind of unperceivable accident than I would just crossing the damn country. Yeah. Uh, is there any states or pit stops that you have planned out that you're looking forward to the most? Um, or like a state you were excited to go through? Uh, you know, I, I the first portion of the trip is I'd say what I'm most excited for where it's a little bit more desolate. Um, so I started in Colorado, or I started in California um, and then I kind of have to get through that whole metropolis of San Francisco and up into Sacramento, but then from there, I'm in the Sierras, and then after that, I cross Nevada, which I'm looking forward to, because it's along that um, uh, Highway 50, mm -hmm. which they say is like one of the remote, most remote, uh, it's, well, it's called the loneliest highway, because there's, you know, not a, not a whole lot around it, and I, I've driven it before, but can't say I've done so on bike yet, Yeah. so that'll be neat, just to kind of be, um, um, 
that much on my own. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that yeah. kind of independence like that. During your stops, are you going to do like social media check ins or make posts and stuff like as, that? As much as I can, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah I'll definitely. Well, where, where, where can we find that on your Instagram? Yes, yeah, so uh, at Ruthless Perform on Instagram and Twitter are my business pages. And you know, since we're the main sponsors for this, we're just doing a lot of the, the media publicity right through mm-hmm. there. Um, but the Facebook page for the event is the Ruthless Performance Right America. It's the name of the the, the event itself, mm-hmm. um, and that will have uh, most of the details on it. Cool. And you can follow along on. on Do they have like a big thing welcoming you back? If possible. Yes. Yeah. And actually, I wanted to invite you guys to that too. That's perfect. Um, October fifth. October fifth. Yep. And that's um, uh, at the Humane Society. Yeah. The right. the Humane Fire Company. Humane Fire Company in Pottsville, um, and that'll probably be around. 11:30 or 12 noon on October 5th. So that's a Saturday. I'm gonna write a note real quick in my October. And you said around noon. Yeah. So we're uh, we're riding in uh, from Pine Grove. There's gonna be a group of us doing a ride in together with a motorcycle and fire truck escort from Pine Grove to Pottsville. Um, so that that should be cool. And then there'll be a band and basket raffle, food, live music, things. What like bands that. you get? Uh, Jesse Wade Gang. Jesse, that sounds really familiar. If you're a country person, you okay, that's yeah, yeah I know, yeah. yeah. I've, I'm not a country person, but I know who he is. That's why I said it sounds. Uh, yeah. Like Beard. I believe so. Yeah. I didn't book the the, the music for mm-hmm. it, but yeah, he's he's been uh, helpful with. He's friendly to Hillside. Yeah. Um, and he's worked with them in the past. Hillside's been doing amazing, amazing things. Yeah. Um, Monty City, my home stopping ground, has been making Hillside very busy lately with yeah. with a lot of dogs and stuff getting taken out of there, and then it just uh, it sucks. But and no fault of the area, but yeah, just, yeah. just some un- unfortunate people. And it just, I don't know, it breaks my heart, man, like, especially when these dogs get a- adopted and then six months later they're back in there. Like, yeah. it just, it, it bums me out, but... Uh, You'd rather see them back in there than on the street, though, or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's a, I think it's a weird... Uh, you know, it's a two-edged sword where, you know, on one hand, you you want the dog to be with the person as, to the best of their ability, but on the other hand, you don't want to guilt trip them for bringing them back in if if, yeah. if, if it's needed for whatever reason. How, what, how did you get involved with Hillside? Like, what what, what spurs you to say, I'm going to do this this bike ride and I want to do it for, you know, these, these two awesome dog or animal uh, company, uh, um, businesses in our area? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so on one hand, uh, I have so I have two dogs. I have Kronos and Naomi. Kronos is a, a full pit bull, and Naomi's half pit, half lab. Mm-hmm. Naomi is from uh, this back and black dog rescue, and Kronos is from Hillside. So um, we've already done a good bit of work with that back and black dog rescue, just in terms of fostering animals, kind of until they find an ad- uh, someone to adopt them out. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of what spurred it. So it's just a lot of work we did with back and black. And then also having a dog from from Hillside, just you know, it it just felt right. And again, just kind of a way to kind of keep it in the community and and do something good for these people. Absolutely, yeah. I, I'm a, I'm I'm a big supporter of that. I I remember when I I used to work for a while there when I was like out of high school. I worked with uh, this company who made like non woven stuff like pee pads and stuff like that. And I used to get them super cheap. And I'd buy like a case of them, and I would just take them up the hillside and drop them off here and there. Yeah, like, they they need the help. They really do. Yeah, that's that's the big thing I tell people like. Everyone's like, "Oh, I'm into the dogs. I like animals." But like, it, go up and donate. Like, take yeah. take a dog for a walk for a day, or go up and just see what they need. Like, donate some puppy pads or yeah. anything. Anything helps them out. Paper towels. Like, I'm not sure of the whole list. I, I I definitely want to work with that and get more involved. But uh, we actually have Hillside coming to Skooks Fest, Skooks, uh, Skooks Stock. Um, one of the members of the band, uh, Faith in Exile, Andrew, he's a huge supporter of Hillside and, okay. and, and, and dogs and stuff like that and animals in general. And uh, he's actually paying the vendor fee for them to come. Good, like, yeah. Like he's, like he's going to take care of it for them so they can be there and, and get some exposure, maybe get some help and stuff like that. Good. So, you know, sometimes people have some not so great things to say about Hillside. But, mm-hmm. you know, I think it's just a matter of the fact that they are just the, I don't want to say the premier uh, dog rescue of the area, but anytime someone has finds a stray dog or anytime there's a problem, you know, they're, they're the guys that we have to call. And, you know, when you're dealing with, with so many people that are all just primarily volunteers, mm-hmm. you know, occasionally, I guess you could get something. Well, what's, what's the other one? There's Hillside and there was... The Ruth Steiner. Ruth, yeah. Yeah. And I, I, that's something, um, you know, it's unfortunate I didn't do any work with them. I have no animosity to them whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just a matter of, you know, I only had realistically since February to start planning this and getting yeah. it together. And it was just, you know, I could only get so many people involved, but they're, they're a fantastic organization as well. Yeah. Now 
you said you're not a big biker, right? Nope. So did you, did you go out and buy a bike for this, or did you always have a bike? Or um, So, and uh, this is interesting because, um, so last year, right around this, last year, um, a year from this past weekend was the first time I did anything realistically on a bike. Um, it was actually within the first week of me having a road bike, which makes, you know, it, it could lend to some themes of overconfidence or something mm-hmm. like that. But no, I, I've, we're, we're pretty sure this will all work. <laughs> so you're just going but, and like, just, yeah. I'm going to wing it. Yeah, no, but um, no, we, we, there is some pretty rigorous planning that went into it. But this time last year, I did what was called the Tour de Shore at the time, which is um, a, it's a bike ride, a charity ride from Philly to Atlantic City mm-hmm. um, that raised money for, I think it's uh, Families for the Fallen, basically money for um, families of um, uh, police officers that were killed in the line of duty. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty big event. And, you know, it's from Philly to Atlantic City, so you're dealing like 65 miles. So I, I went out, I bought the bike, um, and then I had the flu, didn't really get to train for it or anything. Um, and then ended up, you know, being on the road bike. For realistically, this is the first time I've been on one, it was that weekend. Um, I get on it, and I have, I don't want to say a remarkable time, but it was, it was a pretty damn good time mm-hmm. from from Philly to Atlantic City. Now, were you with people and stuff as well? Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah there was a, a, I think this year there was about 2,500 people that did it. Um, and so last year I'd say probably somewhere around the same. So it's all, you know, all the roads blocked off and everything. It's neat because you get to cross the uh, Ben Franklin Bridge on the bikes. There's no traffic, obviously. So it's neat just kind of seeing it from a different angle. You're like, oh, I'm like, I'm, I wrote, I own this road today. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's and, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I, I rode a bike. My dad's like, you should ride a bike with me. And I, I got on this mountain bike where like, we're going to go on a, you know, that's a different experience on a seat when mm-hmm. you become an adult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that does not feel good. A little bit of weight coming down on you. Yeah, yeah. like your, your, your butt and your, 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 your junk are all yeah. getting smashed in your side. <laughs> like, like, I can't sit in this chair. Like, I was like, I'm not riding anymore. It's like, well, I'm like, everything hurts. Every, like, it, it just goes numb eventually. Yeah, <laughs> and, it's fine. and then I, well, I, I, he has, I don't know if he has it, but I, and then I obviously listen to Howard Stern and a few of the people on that show have yeah. their bike riders, but they do like the, the cycle stuff in the house. And they that you could buy like the bike suits that have the padding. Yeah, most, in most the butt bike and the crotch. It, yeah, yeah. yeah. and like, that helps. You're like yeah. like a football player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, so yeah, I did that last year, and then I did that again this year. But I did it this year on the new bike. So um, most of the cycling gear was donated from uh, DNA Bikes out in Tamaqua. Okay. Um, they've been really helpful on all this and just getting kind of just pushing everything in the right direction and making Are you getting sure. Getting a cool that, suit. Um, yeah, we're working on making a jersey, so I'll have my own jersey for it. But cool. otherwise, I'll be. Um, the majority of the time, I'll be wearing my uh, my uh, Jim Thorpe's bike jersey, which is the bike team I ride for with out in Jim Thorpe, that bike team that I did the Tour de Shore with. Cool. Um, but you know, for the you know, I I, I don't want to make it sound as though it, you know I'm completely unprepped for this though, because like I said, since February we've been kind of gearing up for this. But mm-hmm. in addition to that, you know, just because of my line of work, I'm I'm pretty pretty disposed to just kind of being. Um, being capable for these endurance events in the yeah. first place. So I mean, you can't prepare for a cross country. No, yeah, the, you, you know I mean, like, pra- <laughs> practice ha- practice starts when I leave the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's gonna I don't know, it's gonna be a journey, man. Yeah, I just hope you have your data plan unlimited. So oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's pretty neat. Some of the stuff we have worked out, like um, so, just across the back of the bike, I'll have um, you know my dry bag with a lot of my stuff in it. But across that, we have a, um, a solar panel, and the solar panel can charge. Um, some some external batteries for devices that are uh, attached to the frame. So I'll, even while I'm riding, I'll be I'll be all, all plugged in and everything. Yeah. So yeah, that'd be that's awesome. I, I I like the I was I would like the idea like even when people are like oh you have to drive really far I'm like ah oh, yeah I'm like don't you hate that I'm like no because yeah. I I kind of like just especially if I'm by myself. Sorry, I get the beer burps. Um, <laughs> I like to. I just like to sit in the car and listen. To like I like talk radio. I like podcasts. Yeah. So just being kind of by yourself and you can yeah. just kind of listen to some stuff. Get immersed in it. I, I agree with that completely. I, I'm the same way. This will be probably the eighth cross country drive I've done. Mm-hmm. Obviously not on a bike, but um, so I have a lot of experience. Kind of the same same thing. And I think the longer the longer bout of um, the longer bout of time you have, kind of by yourself, to kind of either get immersed in thoughts or or in a, a podcast or an audio book or something the more the more you can kind of extract from it. Yeah. And, you know, that's only, you know, I've only experienced that over the course of a, of a few days with, with, you know, sojourns across the country in the car or whatever. So it'll be neat to see what that kind of shapes into over the course of so many days on yeah. the bike. I would, uh, are you get, are you going to have like a, a GoPro or anything on you? Uh, just the phone, but the way the phone mount is on the front, it, uh, it should pick up some good, some pretty good video. Cool. So I'm excited I just, Like those GoPros are designed to like make really, really long videos, like mm-hmm. a cool time lapse. 
across the whole thing. Yeah, yeah I, that would I, be awesome. I was thinking about it, and I, I, I still keep kind of going back and forth on it. But on one hand, it's just another expense. You know, yeah. The whole thing, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of this is coming out of pocket. But on the other hand, um, it's That's just, an experience you're never going to do again. Well, yeah, but I, even just, but for the sake of having. Um, even though it's not that much more weight, just a little bit more weight. It's mm -hmm. you know where do I stop in terms of what I take, and I I think the the, the iPhone should have decent enough video. But yeah, we'll, but we'll see. So you're gonna kind of is, is your GPS built into your phone as well, or is that physical uh, maps? Physical maps, physical oh maps. Boy. Yeah. Well, there are, I I will have um, like data points on the GPS for for the phone, but for the most part, I'm I'm just you know trusting the maps a little bit more because batteries aren't gonna go dead in a physical map. Yeah. But you know they're they're waterproof maps and everything, so they're, they're pretty good quality. Sounds. I mean, it sounds cool. I mean, it's gonna be gonna be a lonely ride, but yeah. it's gonna be a good time. Man. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it's the country's gotten small enough at this point with the road system and everything that I'm not ever really truly, you know, away from it. It's not mm -hmm. like I'm biking through canyons and like you know it. I'll be on roads. You know, it's a road bike. I'll be mm -hmm. on. So I'll be at least, you know, never more than a few feet away from. Now you're. The, to people to donate to this, is it still open, or how long? When, when does that officially close? Or how? the that's a good question. So the GoFundMe page, that's that's that'll be open up until the uh, the end of the event, I believe. So the, the, till the day you come back. Yep. Okay. Yes. Sponsors like business level sponsorships have closed down for the most part, but we're, we'd be happy to work some out with any kind of business that'd be interested if there are any out there. Mm -hmm. But you know, for the most part, it, um, anyone's anyone's welcome to donate to the GoFundMe. Um, the big thing, um, like I said with you with that, that October 5th event, get people to show up to that. That's what we're really looking forward to. That's just going to be one of the bigger uh, fundraisers for, cool. for Hillside and Back in Black. Awesome. What, what, is your, what is your mind state and your motivation going into this to keep you positive and keep you pushing for this event? I just, well, I realistically, I, on one hand, I want to say I, I don't think it's as big of a deal as people think it is. Mm -hmm. You know, the big thing is just kind of getting the time off. If you, if you kind of zoom out, it looks like, it looks like it's a, this really momentous undertaking, but I I don't think it is. I you know it's it's nothing but just um, a series of just really small problems that I got to kind of solve independently of one mm -hmm. another. Um, you know, but outside of that, even if I did kind of want to look at it as this big undertaking, you know, I I I think that we need a little bit more. Um, we're not getting a, a whole hell of a lot of adversity in our lives. I mean, things have gotten relatively easy. To kind of self-impose a little bit of adversity is probably good for me. It's probably, you know, something that, that I, I need. You know, I'm a young guy, so that helps too, just in terms of, um, you know, just having this, this kind of experience under my belt. But, like, uh, I'm, I'm a, uh, like, I, I'm a, I don't want to say a history buff, but I'm fascinated by World War II. Mm -hmm. And to think that that just happened, like, that's like... Like it's like three people. Ago. Yeah, not even. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, well, people lived. Could, people could live to be a hundred. Yeah, like they're still alive that, yeah, that were like there. Like yeah, a, a person and a half, two people at most ago. And and they they dealt with some real shit. Yeah. And we are, the stuff we're complaining about relative to that, it doesn't even make sense. Yeah. So I don't want to say what I'm doing is in any way comparable to World War Two, but it is at least a. Some, it's de it's definitely going to be like you're going to come back a different person. I think I, so. I think you're gonna. I think you're gonna really find yourself. You're gonna have yeah. a lot of time to self reflect. Yeah. You're gonna have time to, like I said, listening to stuff, learning. You're gonna you're gonna really learn about yourself and what you're capable of, and and really just find yourself. I think it's a good thing. I think it's something. I, I wish more people would figure like stuff like maybe not drive your bike across the country. Whatever works not in a, their particular yeah, situation. Yeah. I like how you're going out of your comfort zone and out of your box a little bit. And you're like, you know what? And not only about, not only are you doing it for you, but you're doing it for something bigger than yourself too. You're yeah. trying to help, you know, animals who don't they they can't spend or talk for themselves or raise money on their own. So you're doing it to try to help them and help a good cause. Yeah, it's kind of getting a lot of variables. I keep saying dogs, together. but there's definitely cats and yeah. other animals yeah. at the <laughs> shelters as well. Yeah. I'm I, just a really big dog. Yeah, guy. same same. We can just keep saying dogs. I'm <laughs> yeah. fine with that. Yeah. Yeah, like, not I don't hate yeah. cats. Yeah. Uh, I just I'm, don't own any. <laughs> I'm not doing this for the chameleons or the goldfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think last time I was at Hillside, there was like a horse there. Yeah, they had some weird stuff kind of come in the past couple of weeks. I think a donkey or something. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I gotta, I want to get up there one of these days and just go like help, like just donate a time for a day or yeah. whatever they. Would yeah, do. and that that's something you know, people that are strapped for cash. That's definitely something anyone out there could do is mm -hmm. is go out there and just kind of, you know. I found a dog in Monty City one time, and you could tell he was. I think someone left him in the woods and just kind of abandoned him. 
and uh, yeah, they stick a little bit. Um, <laughs> but he was like, he was like standing. Well, pick a pack was still open, and he was just standing at pick a pack. I guess he smelled food, and he was just standing out there begging for food. And he was super skinny and, and stuff. And uh, we had a chocolate lab, and I walked up, I gave him a couple treats, and I put a lead on him. And then uh, I brought him back to my parents' house. And at the time, I had a Rottweiler, and then I had her lady. Mm-hmm. And he did not get along with really any dogs. He, especially, he was like he was food aggressive, but he was really good with people. And I was like, man, I feel like shit. Like I knew I'm taking him to Hillside, and I know he has a good opportunity. Who just like he got comfortable with me, and I was like, probably the first person he was with for a while. And then yeah. I left him there. And I remember like I put him in the cage, and he jumped up on it. Like he started crying. Like he knew he was getting left there. I was like, I felt like such. Like I got in the yeah. car, I cried the whole yeah. way home. I was like. No, but yeah, it's it's one of it's it's a weird thing because on one hand it is something where and most of the people are in in any kind of animal rescues are coming more from that emotional side, but you know yeah. on the other hand we it's not only that we have an emotional responsibility but we have like a uh, just a, a responsibility for their well being and in that case you did you did the, the I best just, thing. I don't get how people can just mishandle a dog yeah. or an animal in general like. Yeah. A cat, maybe, because they're assholes. Yeah, sometimes, the, but, yeah. But like, I know I'd be having a terrible day at work. Everything is just terrible, and I open my front door, and you'd never get greeted by another person or another thing in this planet like you get greeted by your dog. I like, agree with that. Completely. Oh my god! Like you're home. I thought yeah. you were never coming back. Like, like you're watching yeah. Secret Life of Pets, where they literally yeah. Like, I, they, I saw the trailer. At they least, leave, yeah. and then the dog's like they're gone forever. Yeah. Uh, what do I do? Like, how do I figure this problem out? And then you come home, and you're like, oh my god, oh my god! I thought you were like, <laughs> like, yeah. like just like they're pro- like I don't know. It's a really cool little cute movie, but. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's it's a cool experience, man. Just being a pet owner, or a dog owner, and you you come home when your dog's like, like nothing in life is gonna love you more than that animal. Yeah, they're there for you. Yeah, yeah. I, I I said it before, but yeah, yeah, Kronos, the my my guy dog, he's he's one of my best friends. He's mm-hmm. cool. He's a cool cool guy to have around. Yeah, I I, I, get, I get guilty to like we'll lay in bed and I'm like get up here. Yeah. Like and then I was like, <laughs> you guys are taking up all the bed because. For how little she is, she spreads out. She sprawls out. Like yeah, they get she's like a queen. <laughs> she's, she's the queen. Um, but yeah, that's yeah. I love it. I'm a big dog supporter. Um, another cool thing that we were talking about before is uh, Loki and Layla Candles. Um, they're a local business as well. So I just want to bring awareness to it. Um, every every candle is named after a dog breed, and they all have like cool little scents and smells. They are coming out with a, a fall line very very soon. Um, today is the last day for the offer code, so it really doesn't do much in that aspect. But they, they're always at the hometown auction. Um, they are on Facebook. They have their own website. They do candles and waxes. So if you want to support local business and maybe not buy Sensi, unless it's a local vendor, I guess. That, mm-hmm. I don't know. But they, they do waxes as well. Um, and I think a lot of their – I think every candle that they um, sell or any wax they sell, pro- proceeds go to a veteran charity. And they also go to like – a, like a, a, an animal shelter. Yeah, I, I did take a picture of that because I'll, I'll probably be getting some of those tonight. That's that's a good thing that they're doing. Yeah, that's, I I have right now the Saint Bernard is burning. That one's really really good. And then we got some waxes. I think they got some prototype ones they're working on. They gave us. Nice. And then uh, like the Chocolate Lab is like a chocolate fudge brownie. Whoa. They have a lot of really cool ones on there. That's yeah, this a, this is a good candle. Yeah, I, and that's I've had that for like about four or five days now, burning pretty continuously, and there's still a lot left to it. But they're cool. I mean, the, the candle itself is a great shape, but it's, it's awesome. I definitely check them out, Loki and Layla. But uh, yeah, so like about a little, uh, you, you said you raised M- Minersville, then then moved to Pottsville. Yep. Were you always an athlete? And- yeah, I, so I swam. Um, I swam throughout high school, uh, middle school and high school. And then I swam a little bit in college, but then ended up uh, getting a job early on in strength and conditioning at mm-hmm. the university. Um, so that, that, you know, took up most of my time throughout college, but you know, pretty consistently an athlete since I was little. You know, I, you know, I it would, I would just get in trouble as a little kid, which you know a lot of hyperactive kids do. Which mm-hmm. is another reason why a lot of athletes, you know, they are athletes is because they kind of found that that thing that kind of works that you know keeps that, them occupied. Yeah, they're all that energy is going to something good. That was my struggle when I was diagnosed with my joint disorder, and I was like, they're like, oh, you shouldn't play sports anymore. I'm like, yeah, that I don't know anything else. Like, yeah. Like I knew I was gonna be, I knew I was gonna be a factory worker. I, I had college wasn't for me. Like if I'm into something, I apply myself. But if I'm not into it, I'm it's not. Gonna, yeah, it's, yeah, it's I'm, overrated. Yeah, you're sitting in school and you're like, yeah, there's no way I'm passing this test because all I think, all, all I care about is I'm gonna go play basketball after school or something. But uh, and then I couldn't do sports anymore. And then my body was like, oh no, it's it's shutdown time. You're not doing any of this anymore. And then uh, the depression and stuff kicked in. And then 
just ch- it's it's tough for an athlete to find something after that. Yeah, you know, it, it's yeah. it's challenging. Yeah, it, which is you know it, it has helped me in, in this domain anyway. You know, I've been pretty consistently working out since then. Mm-hmm. I uh, power lifted a little bit through college as well, competitively. Um, but you know, outside of that, realistically, you know, people ask why I work out at this point, and I just tell them basically it's just so that I don't just just go in some kind of blind rage at the grocery store or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you need something to outlet. Like yeah. I, that was mine was basketball. Like if I had a bad day, I'd go get my ball, I'd go to any court and just play from sun up to sun down. And then when I didn't have that anymore, I just like I'm not gonna get angry, but I'm gonna get really depressed about this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's tough, man. It's, I'm not saying what well, was me as an athlete, but. When you when you don't have that in high school and college and you're like that's all you put your work into and then you're like oh now you have to figure it out and go to do a job and that's why you have that one guy who sits in the bar still and he's like 18 beers deep and he's like in high school I drew four touchdown passes still has his var- varsity jacket yeah because yeah. they, they, they had nothing they they yeah. they, they didn't find that outlet it's, yeah it's a it's a sad thing it's an but, interesting transition to try to make but yeah and and you know a lot of that could be um almost just a correlation to where the same type of people are, are prone to depression are also prone to um you know really immersing themselves into something so yeah that, yeah because yeah. so, you got to stay busy yeah like, I, I tell you what i you probably i could definitely see how you would enjoy doing your business because that coaching was awesome for me yeah i i coach as well over at uh Pottsville. i coach i do strength and conditioning for the swim team over there awesome yeah yeah yeah, that's that's like a sport. It seems like it, like most schools are joining up, and because of the, like not every school has it. I think like yeah. North Schuylkill swim team is mixed with Mont area. Yeah, I, not at, at no fault of North Schuylkill's though. I don't think. I think it's I think just, it's just hard for yeah. it's hard to get kids yeah. out for the sport. Well, and it's in the in the area, it's it's not one of the prestige sports. You got to yeah, be if you're not football. playing fo- if you're not playing football yeah. or basketball, they don't. Yeah, or even like wrestling used to be huge, and that's not even as popular. No, as wrestling's it. too tough for most people. That's yeah. a, that's the issue, and we mm-hmm. don't have tough people around anymore. I actually thought wrestling with this whole mixed martial arts surge, I thought wrestling was going to explode, mm-hmm. and it really it did, but it didn't. But I, just, I, well, I think a lot of people just don't see the A to B relationship between wrestling and, and a career in, in something like MMA. And yeah. I mean, that's something we have had local people have some success yeah, in. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and that's I mean that's that's like how to that's how that's learn how to crawl before you run. I mean, yeah. if you have a good wrestling background, you'll do very well in mixed martial yeah. arts. As you should, because realistically, even you know, for the limited experience I have with MMA, just from a strength and conditioning pra- practitioner standpoint, it's not. To, even to get good at MMA, you don't want to have a, a lengthy career ahead of time of just taking punches to the head from boxing or something. No. Wrestling is definitely the way to kind of yep. get immersed in that. It teaches you discipline, teaches you how to control your weight, teaches you how to a, a different style of strength and strength and conditioning. Mm-hmm. Um, it just it's just a, it's just a really good ground point. Like even if you you don't do wrestling, I, I, a lot of like jujitsu classes are popping up where kids aren't even mm-hmm. doing wrestling; they're going straight to jujitsu. Which I would I would encourage doing both. It, just me. I if I had a child, I'd be like I don't think I'd sign them up for football. No, yeah, Never. no. I, I I really don't see much value in it outside of, you know, the again the prestige of it. But I think yeah, people get really mad at when I say it. But I was like I don't think a kid should play football until he's at least like. 16 15 years old yeah i i, I think midget football is a terrible idea yeah i agree with that and i mean even even for any sport to have an athlete that wants to excel in that sport you know if you are just doing that sport and you're doing year-round camp specifically for that sport mm-hmm. and you're in you know travel leagues or whatever you're going to peak early and your your career is going to pitter out earlier than it should because of either injury or overtraining mm-hmm. so the, the best bet regardless of if you are going to do football if you want to get good at football at a young age is to make sure that you're all are at least doing one or two other sports kind of throughout the year to to, to even things out i i read this i'm not read i think i was on a joe rogan podcast I, I even forget who it was but i believe it was it was a mixed martial arts guy and he was talking about his training and he goes well, how do you train and joe's like i go hard like when i go in the gym like he goes you have to train to the point where you can't move the next day he goes yeah i, I go hard in the gym and he goes why he goes what do you mean I, he goes he goes would you rather train three days a week and have a rest day in between or would you rather train super light every day but at least you're in the gym and you're staying active like this this yeah. guy's this guy's process was he'll go to the gym and maybe if his the, the average rep is 10 he'll do five or four and then the next day he's able to still do his four again and the next day he's still able to do his four again and if he gets to that point where his body's getting like he's in pain pain is never good like yeah, like no. and then you dial it back down like because if you take those days like especially if this is a, t- a top level elite training i'm not saying this is good for like the average everyday person but it was just a different way of looking at it because i always thought like 
around here, you go to the gym and you work yourself till you can't walk, and then you're trying to walk home and drive your car home, and you're like, I can't turn the wheel, and you're like, yeah. then you you can't work out for two days after, and that's where most people quit the gym because they worked out so hard that they didn't like the feeling of the burn after. Yeah, they they say uh, stimulate, don't annihilate. Yeah, that's kind of the 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 idea with that. But mm-hmm. yeah, like what you're talking about with doing it m- with more frequency, um, but less intensity. Um, that's like almost feeling it like as a skill work. So it's like doing it. Uh, doing some kind of strength and conditioning work or, or doing grappling or whatever um, for the skill of it, which is something that you develop a little bit better when you are doing it with more frequency as opposed mm-hmm. to just one one bout. Because, you know, if you are doing, you know, uh, fewer workouts, but they're, they're more lengthy, that's more time where you're really fatigued at the end of the workout. So either your technique's going to hell or, you know, some, it's not as pristine as it would otherwise look if you were just more fresh, more frequently. Mm-hmm. I just even when I coach too, like we're gonna learn, we're gonna work this, 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 and this, and then the kids would go home and try to do every fifteen things we worked on, mm-hmm. and I was like, that's not the point of it. Like, yes, we're gonna teach you fifteen things to work on, but take what you're weak at now and make that better, and then you take the next thing and work it out, and then the next thing and work it out. It's like it's kind of like the the Bruce Lee quote. Like I don't I I don't fear a man who knows ten thousand kicks. I fear the man who's worked one kick ten thousand times. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, there's there's some truth to that. Mm-hmm. It it just you gotta you gotta because there's athletes who make a career off just being good at one thing, you mm-hmm. know. And then once they get they master, then they neck they then they take on the next thing. It's like the the uh, the, the theory of ten thousand hours. You're not a master at something until you've done that one thing over ten thousand hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. That was I think um, uh, from one of Gladwell's books. Um, that 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 ten thousand hour rule came mm-hmm. up, and I think that was something that was almost like a, um, I think that was like a, a like a secondary or tertiary point that kind of got blown out of proportion. Mm-hmm. But regardless, to be doing more work over a long a longer career is probably better than less. Like I don't think you know you you go from that nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine to ten thousand and all of a sudden it's it all fits but mm-hmm. you know more work over a longer career is definitely yeah. a boat to i i translate that more to how, not so much like making it as a goal that you have to hit those hours yeah but i i look at it more as no matter what you do the first couple times or the first maybe 10 years or even five years yeah you're not going to be amazing no. at it yeah like it's going to take time like even with this like i sometimes like I tried it. I, I, when I first did it, because I started in November, so I'm not even not even a full year doing this yet. Um, and then sometimes I'm like, man, that episode, I, I just didn't, I felt like I could have done something different. And then I just think to myself, like, don't beat yourself up. Like, learn from it in the next one, do better. Adapt, or, yeah. And, and just keep working. Like, there's a lot of things I'm proud of with this show. Some things I'm not. Like, I wish I would have did more research when I came to some of my equipment. But the fact that I'm not no, even... No, I, I mean, one thing I'll, I'll say right off the bat, just in terms of, you know, everyone, I think that's mo- more people's problem than not is just mm-hmm. that overanalysis. Yeah, and the overthink it. it. Yeah, and, and one thing I found, um, I think it was The Lean Startup by Eric Reese. Um, it's a book. But it, um, it talks about something called the minimum viable product, mm-hmm. the MVP, they call it. But basically, whatever you could, if you could get something out there, you know, you're... you're if you if you can get something out there and there's someone that's going to be interested in it, it's better than it's better than just dwelling on all these things that you could potentially be doing right. And that, that's what I look at. Like if, if two people listen to this and get something out of it, yeah. I'm happy with it. Yeah. If if a thousand, then even better. You so know. You need you need two people to get to the thousand. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm 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 proud of the fact that I've only been doing this since November and my my Facebook's almost 1800 people. So yeah, that's when I awesome. make when I make a post and say go check out your GoFundMe page. Yeah. Uh, there's I don't, do all 1800 people on my Facebook listen no, to this. No, but who does? No, yeah, be, yeah. But maybe to do 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 50 people listen that that yeah. translate from the Facebook to the thing and listen to it and say, "Oh, this kid has a good message. I like what he's doing. He's not just posting it to post it. Yeah. That he's actually passionate about it. Yeah, he's you're, looked into it yeah. and he's trying to help somebody else out." So I, I regard you are a positive influence on the community and, and trying to be. Yeah, that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. That is a good thing. This and you got to that's a that's a not not even that's not even easy cuz you got to I always protect myself in a different percent percentage like when I walk around I'm like, "All right, I got to carry myself in a different manner because if I act go around and act like an idiot no one's gonna like i'm hindering the positive then you know what i mean like yeah it's, it's, yeah no i i totally it's a perception you got to put yourself yeah. out there yeah not a it's not a not an area for optimism unfortunately mm-hmm. so you just kind of got to be that light because we live we live in an area too where you can do 
a, like you do a hundred a hundred great things and you can do you can you can change the community you can do whatever you want but the second you do that one negative thing yeah that's what the people that's, are gonna latch on and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna say everything you did that those hundred things you did was a fluke because you made that one mistake yeah yeah as opposed that. to the people that aren't doing anything hundred yeah. percent and they're the ones who are you know put out in the light the most <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but uh yeah, is there anything else you wanna you wanna talk about or plug before we? No, that that was cool. I think um, you just you know, a weird point. I, I thought might be an interesting topic of, of discussion. Just mm-hmm. kind of what you're talking about with your with your athletes and just kind of not trying to overburden them, but just talking to them about kind of doing more things. The way the way we kind of do things is uh, one of the things we talk about is so even just you know personally or whatever for that matter is basically as opposed to trying to do improve multiple things at one time. It's we'll do like. Um, like you said, find that find that weakest thing, and then we'll just hone in on that for like a twenty one mm-hmm. day period. So you habituate something, so you just continuously habituate something new, something better, um, and then from there you just kind of progress on to the the next less shitty thing, and yep. then just kind of. I always tell people like they're like, "What can I do to become a better soccer player?" Or let's just use soccer example, and I say, "There's two things I want you to work on. Just take three or four cones and set them up in different patterns." And dribble through them. And every time you dribble through them, you're going to work on the top of your foot, the fr- front of your foot, the back of your foot, and top of your foot. I said then every workout, you don't finish until you can you juggle the ball at least. Like set a goal for yourself. Like I'm going to juggle 10 times today. And a juggling is where you kind of just keep it in the air. And mm-hmm. I said and after you do your 10, stop. The next day, like last yesterday was 10. Today I'm going to get the 15. Or just add a number to it. The linear progression, yeah. Because if you can control the ball in soccer... If you can juggle and you you can control that ball, it, it, it looks stupid. And people are like, well, why do people juggle? That looks like a waste of time because you're learning ball control. Now when a ball comes flying in at you and you have to trap it with your body, you're like, oh, if I trap it with this, like, because I juggle, I, I, I'm going to soften my leg a little bit to absorb yeah. it so the ball can land straight to my feet instead of hitting it and it bounces five feet away from me. Yeah. When I'm dribbling, if a ball comes in hot, I know how to soften my foot and soften my touch so I can get more the ball connectedness back. with it. Yeah, yeah you're, in, you're, you're getting that touch of the ball in the in the field. That's something we call uh, like proprioception, which mm-hmm. is just your your general kind of awareness of your body in space, yep. which is something we work on. Yeah, um, and that's one thing I uh, you haven't really talked about, but um, you know, one of the things we work on, uh, one of our primary populations in general, you know, outside of just general strength and conditioning, people just come to us occasionally, um, just for purely for injury prevention protocols. And I don't know how much of a of a soccer following you have or whatever, but but one of the things that we stress with uh, uh, soccer players are a perfect example of this: hamstring strength. Mm-hmm. The, the stronger those hamstrings are, there's there is a, a direct correlation and causation for that matter between hamstring strength and a reduction in ACL tears or even just knee pain for that matter. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Just because you so it's just chronically used to just kicking over time, those, mm-hmm. the front of the leg gets too strong, and then that, that kneecap gets a little bit out of place, and then some some weird stuff happens out that that. ACL. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense because I remember. I remember when I played soccer, I, I, I wouldn't say my hamstrings were amazing because I didn't really work, like, do strength and conditioning. Mm-hmm. The top, like you said, the top, my, my quad was a beast. And then doing football, we, I did a lot of, like, calf, like, the, like, back pedals and, like, stuff like that. Yep. And uh, I just remember, like, just, because I, I, was, I was a kicker, but I didn't do, like, everything. I just did, like, this, like, I did everything the team did, but I just focused on kicking. kicking. I remember I just kept pulling my groin a lot, like, always pulling my groin. I'm like, why am I, I never did that yeah. ever. And I just think because I was overworking certain muscles. And yeah, stuff. It, it's weird where people think uh, people really want to focus on like sports specificity when they're doing any kind of uh, training. Mm-hmm. But in reality, a lot of training needs to be almost like anti-specific, where you're working on kind of being in some of these movement patterns that you wouldn't otherwise be exposed to, just simply so when you do go back to those other those movement patterns that are specific to your sport, that everything's in in better alignment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I I'm a huge like. I like the yoga too. I don't know how what you how you guys feel about that, but like, yeah, I, I I for the longest time I hated on it, but that's the only workout I can really do now. And I was like, I'm not I'm not looking forward to doing my yoga. And then I I, I did it one night. I'm like, all right, I'll finally put the DVD in. I'm gonna do this stupid yoga. Yeah. And I, I bought the DDP yoga. Oh once yeah. Once again, huge wrestling fan. I bought it. I did the first DVD. Now I on top of my joint disorder, I have another issue where I don't sweat. So my whole life I would overheat. Oh yeah. And I'd have a lot of issues. I did that DVD 
like the first DVD was a 15, 20 minute exercise and just making sure like everything was like resistance and make and feel make you tighten everything up like you're going through mud and doing it. Wow. And your heart, my heart, like literally standing still, just flexing. My heart rate went to like 145 <laughs> and I was sweating. I was, I was like one of the craziest works ever. Like, but the next day I didn't feel like I was hurting. Yeah. I felt really good. I felt limber. I felt like I felt amazing. And I was like, there's something to this yoga. I never thought yeah. of it because the whole time, like, oh, if you're not lifting weights, you ain't. Not, you're not. You're nothing. You know. Yeah. There's a lot of um, a lot of our injury prevention protocols have almost been uh, compared to yoga esque in some ways. Mm-hmm. My my experience with yoga is somewhat limited. I do like a lot of what they do. There are a few poses I think most people should be contraindicated and just just avoid entirely. But for the most part, they they do have a lot of things going for them. Yeah. The, the DDP I can't speak of specifically. I don't I don't have yeah. much experience with that. I just watch you know those the, and the DDP. It's not just the you can, you're not just going to put those DVDs in mm-hmm. and turn amazing. There is a there is a diet plan to it too, and that goes with anything. If you want to lose weight, you got to change your your content. You can't mm-hmm. put. 15,000 calories in a day and then yeah. only burn a thousand and be like, why am I not losing weight? I'm doing yeah. my yoga. Like, no, your, yeah. your intake has to match your outtake and it has to match, you know, how, what you're burning every day as well. Yeah. But that, that's one of those things too, where it's, you know, I think people can almost get overwhelmed when they're starting something up where they're trying to do too many things at the same time. They hear all these conflicting things, either from, from the fitness magazines or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they, they, it just gets too complicated for them. But just even just to get the damn DVD, even even just to get it in the even to get it in the player, that's 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 progress. Yeah, it really, it really is. is. Yeah, you're yeah. like, I'm not doing this today. And like, you're like, oh, and you know, I should probably. And then you finally do it. You're like, oh, what? Why am I waiting for this long? You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. That's something I've come across with procrastination, where I'm just just trying to figure out where the. Um, where the actual line, like I'm a really big procrastinator, but since I've been thinking about it this way, it's it's been at least slightly reduced. Where if I have some kind of thing I need to do, I need to, you know, write an article for a website or something. I'll I, I'll think, you know, that writing is one of the things I hate the most. But you know, I, I it's part of part of what I do, fortunately or unfortunately. But I'll just try to figure out, you know, where is the physical point at which I am procrastinating? Can I like? Can I go to sit down in my office? Can I pull out Microsoft Word? It's like it, when you break it down into these little tiny steps, it, it becomes a lot more manageable mm-hmm. than that, a lot of this trying to you know look look at it. Set, set, set small goals. Yeah, exactly. And, and can't accomplish the small ones, and then you're like, oh, you, then you start building more confidence. You're exactly. like, I could I tackle the next one. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So if people if people were to look for your your business and they and they want to help out to swimming or sports, you yep. know the, the the website and stuff. Yeah. So um, for for the for my business, that's ruthlessperformance.com. There are some things on there for the ride. Occasionally, we'll post some updates on there. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the things for the for the ride are um, are are on there, but most of them are on the Facebook page. Um, but for the business, that there is great. Um, even I, we're on a few different websites um, outside of uh, outside of ruthlessperformance.com, uh, swimmingscience.net or .org. I don't remember what mm. it's. So let's say I'm a I'm a soccer player. I yep. want to up my game. I'm a high school student. Maybe going into my, my I'm going my junior year, mm-hmm. and I really want to hit junior senior year tough. Yep. So I can maybe make an impact or play college ball. Mm-hmm. Um, I contact a website, yep. and then do I come to you guys? Or do you guys come to me, or how does that it, work? It depends. It depends on the distance. So we do some online programming. Um, so if it if it's from from afar, like we you know clients as far away as California, where we do most of our programming online, but we also do workout uh, programs with or well, we work out affiliations with different gyms. So we have we have a, a pretty expansive network across East Central PA so and we're growing so that always helps. Awesome. But you know, um, in addition to just the website if anyone wanted to email me directly to talk to me for whatever reason they could do so. Uh, John at ruthlessperformance.com. So, so you there. give workout plans? Is there like is there is there dietary? Like what's what's Yeah the- we have we have a, a, a registered dietitian on staff. Um, he, he is a that, that's Jesse. He's a, a pretty uh, prolific career. Um, in sports as well, he was actually a pro swimmer, which I don't think too many people could have yeah. made it that level in that that damn sport. But I, I just watched this thing today. It said, "Just just remember, if you think your job is useless, there's a lifeguard at, at Olympic events." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and like Michael Phelps yeah. is sitting on the box yeah. ready to swim, and the guys are standing with his buoy like this, like yeah. just hating his life. No one's ever gonna drown in this he, pool. He probably right? gets paid pretty well too. Yeah. that's almost something to aspire to. Yeah, just sitting there like. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not doing anything today. <laughs> yeah. But we yeah, have even uh, even if people don't want to do any kind of ongoing programming, we also do um, uh, there's uh, uh, X-Phys interventions, which is just like remote programming where we'll do 
just injury prevention protocols. A lot of people are, you know, really uh, adamant about doing whatever programming they're accustomed to with at their home gym, which is fine. But you know, what we do is we'll either touch up a program or we'll give you like a, a set of corrective exercises to kind of do as a warm up, which is the things that have been kind of uh, compared somewhat to uh, yoga because we focus a lot on mobility, mm -hmm. uh, activation, things like that. What do you think about um, what's the big one now that everyone's doing? Uh, CrossFit. Uh, cro so I said, you know, swimming is my second biggest population of athletes I work with, um, but uh, CrossFit is is number one. Um, so you're pro CrossFit. Mm, I'm, you know, I I'm pro people doing things. Mm -hmm. I like, you know, CrossFit scares the shit out of yeah, me. Yeah, as it should. I came from a powerlifting background, so mm -hmm. I can't. You know, it would be crazy for me with a powerlifting background to say that there's something inherently dangerous about CrossFit that, that I'm not exposed to in powerlifting. But um, it's neat. It's it's cool to get people to kind of do those kind of lifts. Um, I, I I don't coach CrossFit classes, but what I do, uh, I do injury prevention protocols with a lot of CrossFit athletes. So it, it almost works hand in hand where, mm -hmm. you know, they are in these group classes. So they're all doing a lot of the same things, but then they'll come to us for tailor-made injury prevention protocol and then you know they can do these group classes and they could also kind of get something a little bit more custom to whatever is wrong with them but yeah so uh, to date we've we've worked with probably over 300 crossfit athletes somewhere between three and five hundred awesome yeah so that, that's that's i i don't really fall too much on one side of the spectrum or the other with that I, I think it's a cool thing for people to do um the cost especially for around here is a little bit um, I don't want to say it's cost prohibitive, but if people are going to pay for CrossFit, you know, then they kind of have some kind of buy-in, which is which is help, helpful as well. Um, one of the things I think is weird about that, like, and I think one of the things that CrossFit is doing extraordinarily wrong is their PR. Like, they don't, um, those CrossFit games that you see on TV or something, the things that they have those people doing, mm -hmm. which that's, they see, like, you see that's what people are doing on TV and CrossFit, so people assume that that's what they're doing in class, but it's usually not the case. Usually in the CrossFit class, it's a little bit rudimentary and a little bit more scaled down for some of these people. Yeah. And what's, what, what's the, the, the deadlift into the, the hoist? And the, oh, the clean and jerk, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that looks... That, uh, There's I, a skill to that. And, yeah, that and, looks terrifying. And if I... Uh, it's a weird thing. Only because I have bad joints, I think, because I'm like, if I did that and my shoulder dislocated, I would knock myself out. I'd, break, <laughs> I'd probably break my nose. Yeah, I've, I've hit my chin a couple times doing that. But really? I think, uh, you know, it, it's a weird thing where I, in, a, in a perfect world, you know, for an exercise like that or the snatch for that matter, uh, which is the one where you just go straight from the ground overhead, mm -hmm. um, people would be working with just a PVC, PVC pipe for probably two to three weeks before they even touch a, a barbell let alone add weight just getting the motion down exactly but at the same time if you were to try to if you were to try to uh say that to someone that was coming into the gym for the first time they would want nothing to do with it so mm -hmm. you know it, it's a little bit of a i'm not gonna lift up a pvc pipe yeah no. so, yeah so they, they want to they just want to get in shape and see what they see on tv so yeah I, I know like when i would get back in the gym all i would do is resistance bands and dumbbells because i don't bench press because with my shoulders like well you bench press you're gonna get so much bigger i'm like because if my shoulder slips and that bench press i'm gonna eat that bar and i i don't want to do that <laughs> um yeah. but I'd, I'd walk over and get like the dumbbells and i'm doing like 15s and they're like you're a bigger guy man what are you using 15s i'm like I said, yeah, I'm a bigger guy. But my joints aren't ready for anything over 15. Yeah. Like, if I go anything past this range of motion, um, it's a no man's land. I don't know what's going to happen. It's your subclavius if that's where the range of motion ends. That's yeah. one of the issues. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, that makes sense. And realistically, you just got to have uh, the, the muscular system's always got to be primed before the skeleton mm -hmm. can be, which is kind of where you're at there. But, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But, again, it's just one of those things where it's one step at a time. Yeah. Yeah, awesome, man. So uh, check out ruthlessperformance.com. Uh, yep. Dot com. yep. Uh, you can check it on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter. Yep. Uh, and then obviously everything. We'll have everything in the links below. And then the uh, go support his ride. The GoFundMe page is still up, so go support that. Help out. And, and if you can't help out with that, just donate some time. Go to Hillside. Go up to, I don't know, Black Dog Rescue accepts. Back in Black. We're uh, back in Black, yeah. yeah. They're, um, so the way they do it is interesting. It's actually a, a distributed network. So rather than having a physical central location, it's all... Um, it's all just basically people just fostering dogs until they're ready oh, okay. to be adopted. So yeah, that's so if you if you want to get involved with that, obviously be a good person, <laughs> um, know how to take care of an animal, and then you can contact them and say, hey, I can take in a dog until yep. it finds a forever home. Yep, exactly. Yeah, which I, I couldn't do that either. Yeah, we we they, they that dog would walk in my house 
and I'm like, here is his forever home. Yeah, that's what we that's what we call a foster fail, which we've had one of those. That's how we got Naomi. We had yeah. grown us from Hillside. There's no way I could take a dog in and love it and be like, get out now. Like, there's yeah. no way. I would yeah. have 14 dogs. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and some people some people just stack them up, but it's that's one of those things where we almost have a you know we have the emotional responsibility of the animal ourselves, but at the same time we almost got to play uh, you know caretaker and. Just yeah. do what's best for That's him. where I would struggle. Yeah. Like, that's what, like, oh, how come, how come we never had, like, get a dog and have puppies? Yeah. I helped a dog one time that had puppies, and I was like, wait, we're getting rid of all six? And, like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, what yeah. if they go to, like, a scumbag? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't want, like, I want to know where these dogs are going to live their whole lives. Like, <laughs> fortunately for both, uh, for both the adopters and for the foster families with, with Back in Black, they go, they undergo pretty, pretty rigorous, uh, uh, screening process because it helps you check vet, veteran records and things like that. Yeah. But no, I'm right there with you. For a lot of them, when we do, we, we have had foster animals kind of come through, and um, for a lot of them, you know, when when the day came for uh, them to meet their their adoptive family, I'm just nowhere to be found. I'm just like, I'm not doing this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go to the gym today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what yeah. uh, what what vets in the area do you recommend? Who do you like? Um, I th- we use Companion Animal Hospital in Tamaqua with pretty good success. I've heard a lot of yeah. good things for about yeah, Tamaqua. Yeah, they are they're they're pretty fair people out there. I don't want to bash anybody, but I had a really bad experience with one in the area, um, and then after that one, we so I had my Rottweiler. She she started growing this big tumor on her leg, and um, we're I'm not saying I, if maybe I'm not the greatest, but like I don't even go to the doctor myself. Mm-hmm. So like uh, the dogs like. Vet bills are expensive, so yeah. like I'm oh, only, I agree. we're only going if there's something bad. Um, even me, like oh I have the flu, like I'll be yeah. fine. Yeah, we'll work it out. Yeah. Um, but she she developed this big this lump on her leg, and we took her to this vet. And the guy, so as soon as we walked in, he go, I want the dog muzzled. I was like, oh, all right, I get it. She's a Rottweiler, and he looked he looked at her and went, yeah, she's a cancer. Uh, sh- I give her three months, and then gave us this ridiculous bill like not an x-ray he didn't even physically touch her wow. he just looked at her and went yeah she'll be dead in three months it's a shame and we're like okay i guess he knows what he's talking about so we let it go for three months and it got bigger but it didn't go anywhere yeah, we've, we've had some similar experiences as well which is kind of how we ended up there i believe but mm-hmm. you know so we went to place. uh mountain shadow up in is that Cresona? like right outside of Cresona between Cresona and like deer lake area like mountain shadow animal hospital or something like that that sounds familiar do they're, they do other animals there too? They, they have might like weird stuff there. I don't know. I, I'm not sure all they do, but yeah. it's it. I love that place to death. So we walked in. They 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 took our dog. They did X-rays and like, all right, she has a huge cancer deposit in her leg. Um, is the bad news. The good news is, for some strange reason, it didn't spread. Um, it stayed in her leg. Bad news again is the only way we're gonna give her a normal life and maybe save her because the day that it lets loose she's going to die, like, it's going to spread rapidly, and she's going to be very, it's going to be a terrible way for her to go. Um, we don't think we should put her down, but we need to figure out what we're going to do, because it's, if that lets loose or pops, she's in rough shape. Mm-hmm. So they're like, the only thing we recommend is we have to take the leg. Not, like, half the leg, the whole leg. And we're like, well, how much does it cost? And they hit us with this price, and it was just out of our realm. Mm-hmm. And we're like, so we went back as a family, we're thinking about it, and they're like, listen, like, we understand, like, maybe you guys are not financially at this point, um, but we have a program here that we have a lot of very wealthy people in the area who like us and know that we do good work. We can put your, do- like, we can put you in this thing, and some people, like, review certain cases, and we oh. can, and, and you never know. And between, I think, I don't know if someone heard the case, I don't know the whole backstory, but someone heard about this paid for the whole surgery wow she was in three days later she came out she had her she was a three-legged rottweiler <laughs> she lived another three or four years and then she got because it's dog then cancer again in her yeah. chest and then she passed away but i i'm a huge fan of, of mountain shadow too but good. i've heard a lot of good things about tamaqua as well good yeah, yeah. I, I don't let's not blow it up because i like going there and be able to get appointments and things for the dogs so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah they're good they're good you know I, i'm kind of the same thing with you where i you know i don't even really do primary care all that much and yeah i think uh some of the requirements for veterinary stuff with some of the dogs might be i don't want to say overblown but you know i get kind of coming from the opposite side of things where people might not have that much experience with vets in the past or whatever yeah but, or they have bad experiences it's like going to a doctor like every time yeah. you go to a doctor you're like i hate going to the doctors all i get is bad news yeah 
Yeah, sometimes that happens with dogs too or animals. There know? are also, um, you know, a lot of the requirements though um, that that these some of these rescues need for you to be an adopter or a foster um, in, in terms of your own, uh, like you know, animal housing past require. Like uh, just just some some rudimentary vaccinations, but a lot of those you could get at just those weird clinics like Tractor Supply or things yeah. like that. You don't Tractor Supply is awesome, yeah. Yeah. really cool. Yeah, we took we took Lady there. She hated it because she was um, around like she was in an uncomfortable spot, so she freaked out. <laughs> she was so good until she got lost. When she got lost, like she used to go through like walk around with us in Petco, and she used to go everywhere. And then when she got lost, like she, everything scared. Like, I think because so many people were like lunging at her, uh, she's like PTSD traumatized wow. over it. So like when we th- when we take her out somewhere, she's like especially when she goes for a walk, she gets down super low. Her tail tucks between her legs. She like almost all me crawls, and then we're like we're going straight to the car. And then she goes okay, and she goes straight to the car. She jumps in, and then as soon as she gets out, she knows okay, I'm in Shenando. Um, this is the house I know the we're next going objective. to. And then yeah. she gets right to the like she just mm-hmm. she's like zoned in. She's like every like she's like. She's like a agoraphobic almost. Yeah. Right? Like if she's not in a comfort zone, she freaks out. A lot of animals need that structure, but you know, there's mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with just providing that for mm-hmm. them. So that's good. Yeah, but we went to tractor supply, and uh, she did not have a good time because it was too much going on. <laughs> but she got shots, and they were really affordable, and they they did a really good job. They literally walk up to the counter and you fill the paper, and they're like, "Bink," and they're like, "See you later." Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, I appreciate that they do that because of that. You know, I just the whole scheduling things and yep. all, all that it's not not that fun and they work they like they said they'll put like so if you're an animal you own an animal and that's something you're looking for um you can always i think check out their facebook page or just go to this thing and they always have posts up for that i believe but, so yeah they're, they're yeah. pretty pretty good about keeping it up to date so anything you want to plug before we get out of here no just at ruthless perform twitter and instagram otherwise uh find the ride on uh, facebook that ruthless performance ride america mm-hmm. and then uh you know, I know you'll be leaving. Well, you'll be have you'll be at Skookstock on the twenty fourth, but we'll be thinking about you when we when we take off from the awesome. Golden Gate. Yeah, and we'll 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 share your story and we'll we'll keep it on our page and and uh, keep your progress, keeping everybody up with your progress. Awesome. And then when you come back, we'll do another episode and you can tell us about it. Cool, sounds cool. good. Looking forward to seeing you on the fifth. Perfect. Yeah, well, and then October fifth. So set set your calendars now. October fifth is gonna be around twelve o'clock. Get more beer burps. Um, at the Humane Fire Company in Pottsville. Yep. Uh, country music. I'm not a country guy, but I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, no, and, <laughs> um, and that's you know, there's there's two rooms too, so there will be music where the live band is, but you know, cool. there's also food and everything in the other room. But just come support a good cause. Um, he's he's biking across the country and he's doing it for the doggos and and the cats and the cats as well. Yeah, and the but, cats, I guess. Yeah, and the cats, I guess. <laughs> but he's doing it for the doggos. So uh, and just well, like I said, we'll have everything in the links below. So go check out um, Hillside, uh, Ruth Steiner, right? This has Ruth. Uh, Ruth Steiner and I. I yeah, Ruth Steiner, and then and then yeah. um, um, back in black. Dog rescue. Yep. Yeah, I always say black dog rescue for some yeah. reason. It's it's both rock and roll things. Back in black is ACDC and black dog is, is Zeppelin. Oh, that's true. I didn't. Even, now you're gonna have me confused. Yeah, <laughs> I always get it. I get it mixed up. But uh, and like I said, if if and if you like you like here what we, you like what you hear here, we also have a donation tab in the bottom. But don't donate it to us in this episode. Give us give all the donations to these guys. Uh, but just support our page and it, please hit that like and subscribe while you're here because if I get to a thousand subscribers, then YouTube pays me and then I can get better equipment. <laughs> um, but but thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for coming and uh, stay stay safe. Keep us up to date. Cool. Send me a message if you get lonely on the road. We'll bullshit a little bit. All right, nice. And uh, and just send me updates, and we'll put them on the page and keep people updated where you are in the country, and we can get like a little a little tracker. Sounds like a plan. Are you getting like a one of those GPS things on your phone too, where you're like day one, and here's where I started and stopped? I'll use I'll be using Strava. I think you know there are some more advanced things out there. If if uh, I get acclimated with something between now and then, I'm, I, I think might like be the, they, they make like Nike cycling app, where mm-hmm. literally like it'll. It, it takes like a GPS location where you are, and you can zoom it in and zoom it out as far as you want. I don't want it to get too creepy on me, yeah. so we'll see. Yeah, but just, yeah, and just be like Snapchat. Oh, this is how far I did today. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I'll I'll have a, a pretty consistent map across the country. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Cool. Are you gonna yeah. grab? Are you gonna buy anything like weird in each state you go to? No, but uh, probably like a keychain for each state. Yeah, it'd be it'd be a pretty get bike get pretty heavy pretty fast yeah uh, there will be some beers that's for sure awesome yeah <laughs> let, well that's another thing you do too if you if you try a good beer tag us and be like hey banging beers podcast um i tried this beer in kentucky it was awesome nice yeah uh, and, we'll we'll, do. and we'll share it to the page and say hey we tried you know he tried a beer in this area good and we'll we'll give some love to those hey, I, I appreciate what you're doing with uh with the podcast i'm trying man we're trying yeah, I, I appreciate you coming to me at, at, at the at yingling it was a it was a cool it was a, it made it feel really good and the, the person i was with was like 
that's pretty good crazy. Yeah. Because we're still at the beginning stages, so I still get really, not weirded out, but I get really like, oh my God, this is happening. Like, So what happened was I was walking around with my interview shirt, and you kind of like, we were walking down this alley, and you're just like, hey, I have to talk to you. And I was like, what I do? And yeah. you're like, you're part of the podcast. I'm like, how do you know? And I went, oh, I'm wearing the stupid shirt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, not stupid, but the yeah, shirt. Yeah. And, uh, and everyone out there, he thinks that it's, 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 it's too tacky for him to wear the shirt. So you just, you know, tell him in the comments that he should be wearing that more. But yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah. Like I go to wrestling shows and the guys will wear the shirt and then I'll hear the other wrestlers like, Tornado Tag Podcast. That's pretty cool. And I'm like, I'm an idiot for not wearing it. Like, yeah. I go to a wrestling yeah. show and I wear one of the wrestlers that's, that's performing <laughs> shirt. And I'm thinking to myself, like, oh, I do a podcast. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure you do, buddy. Like, and then my buddy wears a t-shirt. <laughs> and they're like, oh, you yeah. do a podcast? I'm yeah. like, it's my show. <laughs> like, so I, I got I to gotta start wearing it more. Yeah. But here's a cool thing. So I put this on today. I don't know if you're a wrestling fan. No. So this is the British Bulldog. He was an old wrestler from like the 80s and 90s, and I felt like it fit the show. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Because he's the bulldog, so I wore that today. <laughs> I got a Macho Man glass. It's just always some type of stupid hey, reference. Nothing, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't remember what – it was a weird federation, but I watched it all the time in college. Um, it had uh, Kit Carson in it. It was like old school wrestlers. Um, I don't Name know. Name some of them. Uh, <sighs> it WCW? Well, how, first off, how old are you? It, it, this was these are repeats. I'll tell you that. Much. Okay. Yeah, they, this is a a, lo, a while a whole while later. Um, I'm 25. Okay. But yeah, no, this was they were probably early 90s wrestlers. Um, was it WWF? Is there a WGA? No, I'm not, uh, WG, I'm not even sure about that one. Yeah, <laughs> I got I got I got to find this because <laughs> because I could probably go down a rabbit hole on this one with all. I spent more time doing this than I did some of my statistics homework. <laughs> Just watching old wrestling? Really old wrestling. <laughs> and it was on like one of those weird ESPN channels, I think. They have a really cool series going on now on Viceland where they're ta- they're they're doing these like the dark side of wrestling stories and some of them are crazy, like crazy stories. I believe there's like, yeah. that um uh, like prescription thugs and uh, bigger, stronger, faster. Those mm-hmm. are some good documentaries. Are little... I love documentaries. Yeah, I just watched this one the other night that we're going to talk about on uh, what's today, Tuesday, till tomorrow, um, where it, this dude builds something and he used to work for like a building that's right outside of Area Fifty One, and then he was in there and seen stuff and read classified information and then came out and he was like, "By the way, they have Jesus. alien stuff in there and there's aliens and there's spaceships and people are like you're a liar." And he's like. I'll tell you everything you want to know. And, like, his whole life he's been, like, hunted by our government. And, like, every time he goes somewhere, like, there's something that weird happens. And, like, he said he had attempts on his life. And every time he takes one step forward, like, he gets raided. Like, and he's just, like, he... Oh, oh. Um, yeah. No, I know. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's pretty wild. That That's some of the most compelling stuff there is. And, and like, the crazy thing is, is, like, he'll tell people, like, I went to this building, I worked here, and then I worked here, and I went to college here, and I did this, and I went to that. When, when people research where he worked, like, Gone. his entire life history is deleted. Like, yeah. it didn't even exist. And, and that's compelling. You know, this is a subject I never even really thought about before up until recently where... It, it, that the documentary came out about the guy, and it is. I watch the documentaries on everything. It, that that one was was like oddly compelling. Yeah, it's like if there's any reason to believe in any of this. Did, it's did that. you watch the one about the the guy who kidnapped the girl twice? No, but that's that's nuts. <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> I don't remember what it's called, but it's literally this this guy weaseled his way into this family. And he was obsessed with the one daughter. Yeah. No, I do know what you're talking about. Yeah. I, I heard of that. Yeah. And he, he kidnapped her twice. The first time he was caught by the feds in Mexico. Jeez. And then came back and got her again. Wow. Like, and the family was just, like, okay with it. Like, they didn't press charges after the first time. That's dedication. Yeah. And then he had, the, like, the dad doing, like, weird stuff to yeah, him. Yeah. Like, he was, he was hooking up with the dad and the mom. Like, it was... Dude, it was in. It was deep. Like the whole time I'm watching, I'm like, this can't get any weirder. I'm like, he did what? <laughs> yeah, didn't he basically like MK Ultra them or something? Like he like slipped them some. He didn't even slip them oh. anything. No, he didn't even drug oh, them. Oh Jesus! I think he drugged the girl. Oh, that's what it was. He drugged the girl. This is all secondhand. I didn't see. Yeah, he anything. drugged the girl, and he he would play this tape of saying that there were aliens and that she needs to have the baby of the chosen one by the time she's. 20 and if she doesn't the world is going to end 
and then he would walk in the room like oh, I just like this weird thing just happened he'd have like blood on his head like we just wrecked the car and I was told I'm some type of chosen one and she'd be like I was told I have to have a baby with the chosen one he's like well I guess we should like so he would like take advantage <laughs> yeah, of her yeah and like yeah. she went her whole That's life nuts. believing this so That's even when even when like the, the police were like and her family were like stay away from him mm-hmm. He, she was secretly having conversation with him because she thought in her head she was she had to save the world because he's been tra- like he's been manipulated because she's the kid and then by the time she hit twenty she's like oh my god the world's gonna end I'm not pregnant and then her birthday came and she's like oh they were right he was a weird guy well I know I you know just from some of my again just weird World War Two stuff I'm interested in but you know the basically that all came that all stemmed from the Nazis where they would do like the same kind of thing where where to interrogate people they would slip them uh, like psychedelic drugs that they mm-hmm. they weren't even they didn't even know they did and then they the like the the ss interrogators would tell them that basically that they have like a, a window into their soul and if they lie like they're going to spend eternity in hell and mm-hmm. it's all this crazy stuff the, 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 the nazis were into some supernatural yeah. weird stuff yeah yeah i watched this whole conspiracy thing where they where the nazis went to alaska and they still think there's like a base in alaska that's being like researched for something Wow. Yeah, it's it's insane. I I I like all that weird stuff. Like, not conspiracy. Every not everything's conspiracy, but I just like yeah. I just the get fringe. I get in these weird rabbit holes. Like even on YouTube. Like before I go to bed, it's like top five scariest videos on YouTube. <laughs> they're like I'm gonna watch these for four hours. Yeah. Like and then I go from watching those to people getting pimples popped on their head. And I'm like the whole thing. Yeah, like I need to go to bed. It's three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's out of control. Yeah, I seen a post the other day. It said. Uh, 3 a.m. me and it just says like person with their phone it goes watching two Indian kids building a pool in the middle of the jungle <laughs> you ever watch those where they <laughs> oh yeah I see, I saw that I did see that one yeah <laughs> I watched those for hours yeah. like they trap snakes like he'll make this weird trap and he'll catch something and it's like the snake's bigger than him he's like look what I got I'm like you're fucking crazy yeah. kid <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah wow. That's what happens in this podcast. We take weird turns here and there. Yeah, no, that's good. It's yeah. good. It's it's very open. We we, <laughs> we 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 accomplish what we're here to do, but then we'll take weird side tracks. Yeah, talking then, about Nazis and aliens. Why not? Yeah. Are you like a gamer at all? Do you play games? No. I play well um I play I well I used to play Grand Theft Auto a good bit, like okay. GTA five, PS three. So I'm obsessed again with Battlefield, the new Battlefield, Battlefield One or whatever. Wow. And it's all World War Two. Nice. It's awesome. It's I really played cool. the the Battlefront games, the Star Wars. Oh, the ones. Star Wars, yeah. yeah. Back in the it's it's Battlefield except Star Wars. Oh. It's like giant open maps. I you know the thing that was going to push me over the edge to getting a new gaming system was uh, Red Dead Redemption Two. Yeah, that was I insane. I was so close. Yeah, I uh, I'm an Xbox guy. I still have a, I have a PlayStation, but I've been obsessed with my Switch. That's all I play. What's that? A Switch, like the Nintendo Switch. Oh. So the Switch is literally, it looks like a giant, like if you were to take both of our phones. Okay. And they're like this long, but like maybe this thick. A game? Yeah, and then you can set it like on a tri- like on a stand, and then you can pop the two controllers off and literally just play it. Or you can just slide the system into this little mount, and it'll project it, it'll put it right on your TV. Wow. And it's it's like a high-powered Nintendo. It's crazy. That's but the you way can, to do it. You can play it for like three hours on the, con- like on your on your TV and be like, oh, I'm going somewhere, and then pop it off and take it with you, and then sit and play it, and then take it home and put it back on the charger and play it again. With, like, smart TVs coming how far they have, I think that's, like, the only way you can keep having consoles is something yeah. like that. Yeah. That's remarkable. Well, the, the thing they're working on now, even with Xbox and PlayStation, is, like, they're not, like, they're, they're still going to sell consoles, like, the high-powered consoles, but they're getting to the point now where they want to just sell, like, a Fire Stick, and everything's through a server. Where, uh-huh. where there's like you're literally playing a console through a server, and every game that you own is already on that server, and it just transfers it to like you're streaming the game and playing it. That's the future. But the, but the latency is so minimum that it's like you're playing a real system. Like wow. you can't even tell. That's Around awesome. here, I don't know how it would work because our internet's not amazing. Like they'd have to replace like the BIOS lines and put. Oh uh, yeah. But like in bigger cities, they said it's it, it's insane. I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. My my experience with online gaming was like. Uh, Black Ops One and Two. Yeah, those are good games. Mm-hmm. I'm, see, I'm a more of a Battlefield guy. I like the big. I like when you're like, if like, oh, that guy's hiding in the house. Like, what do we do? I'm like, blow up the house. Like Battlefield, you can I, take a house. Yeah, out. Yeah, I probably would like that too. You just would love not it. Experience with it. Yeah, that seems like a cool thing. Yeah, I'd the get Battlefield, lost, like super, that. especially if like you're into the old school, like World War One and yeah. World War Two. It's it's insane. 
Nice. Yeah, yeah cuz it, it's something like that Black Ops 3 that got too far out there with the jetpacks and this yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. I like when Call of Duty would do like the old school like when they did the World War 1. I. I think no, I think they they did World War Battlefield did World War 1 and Call of Duty did World War 2. Yeah. And then Battlefield did World War 2. So like Battlefield's kind of going like World War 1, World War 2. And I hope they do, like, because no one's ever done Vietnam. Yeah. Like, Battlefield had a yeah. DLC for Vietnam, but they never really, like, co- covered it. Like, I think that'd be interesting. Or even some, like, uh, like uh, Revolutionary War stuff where you, like, got yeah. one, one bullet, you got a musket. Yeah, you're like... The game would change quite like, a bit. Fill, fill this this shotgun or this rifle with nails and sand. <laughs> and <you're>, wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it totally changed the dynamics of mm-hmm. it. People get a little too bold when they just could run around and just keep shooting and keep responding real quick. Yeah. Yeah, wow. I, that's what I like about Battlefield. It's it's definitely it's a different it's a different experience when you're playing. You have to like play with your squad, and you if even if you're if you're terrible at shooting a gun in video games, you can play as a medic and just like throw smoke, quick revive three people, go hide. Like you could play like what was that movie um, where the guy was a medic in the war and he like everyone like they won like best movie of the year that year. I don't know, but he was a medic and he just like would go on the battlefield and just re- and help people the whole time. And he never shot a gun, but he was like one of the heroes of the war. Whoa! Yeah, That's you could wild. you could do that in Battlefield. Nice. You could be the top of the leaderboard, and never shoot your gun. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah, just it's just all options. based on what tra- like if you want to be someone who just resupplies people, you can run around and just throw ammo to people. If you want to be someone who's like a sniper, you can sit in the back of the map and snipe. If you want to be a person who drives vehicles, you can do that. It's- My issue with like the new consoles is, and you know, I think PlayStation held off for longer than Xbox did is there's like yearly fees now like membership fees yeah. to be able to play online xbox did it first yeah yeah but i'll Bastards. tell you what after doing it after paying that membership fee and then seeing what it looks like when it's free on playstation mm-hmm. it's worth paying the membership because yeah. the servers are so good you can control a lot better like if someone's being a jerk you could be like oh cool you want to be like racist or sexist or say terrible like i'll report you and then you're gonna get your account banned, and then you're not. When you come back, you're gonna think twice about being a scumbag. Yeah, like that's it's, it's some accountability. Yeah, there is a lot more accountability. It's really nice. And then when you pay that subscription, they give you free games all the time. Like Xbox, you get free four free games a month. Wow. And then they just they just uh, combined it with this thing on Xbox called Game Pass. So if you buy a system right now, you don't own any games. You can get Xbox Live mixed with Game Pass for the year for like, I think it's like seventy five bucks for the year. Now, it sounds like a lot for a yearly subscription, yeah. but you get four free games a month, every single month, two Xbox, two or 360, and then the Game Pass is pretty much like Netflix, where you go on and there's like 200 free games, and every single time Xbox comes out with an exclusive, that game that, that, that game is there day one for free, and you can just click like, oh, I want to download this, this, that. You can download all 100 games and have them on your system. The Halo is always the Halo is yeah. always neat. So if you it get Game great. Pass, you're, you're guaranteed to play from Halo 1 all the way to the newest Halo. And then when the newest one comes out, because you have that subscription, brand new comes out Tuesday, it's on your system. Wow. You can play it. Gears of War, all of them. Forza. It's awesome. It's a wow. really cool service. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So if anyone wants to buy a system now and you go to GameStop, Tell them I sent you. <laughs> <laughs> Not cool high school podcast. Um, but yeah, that'll do it. Um, thank you so much for coming. Like I yeah. said, we'll, we'll, we'll keep in touch. And uh, like I said, everything will be below in the description. Follow his journey and go support the pupos. All right. Cool. Thank you so much, man. Hey, thanks. All right. Take it Good easy, guys. To uh, this the, um, this will air tomorrow. And then, another, then we'll have a new episode coming um, Friday. Actually, tomorrow or Thursday, depending on how editing goes tonight. But I'm going to get up sooner than later. Okay, cool. All right, right, see you guys. Thank you so much. How long do you think you went? It goes quick. 60? 60 minutes? Yeah.